What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a scene walkthrough of the recent visual effects shot that we uploaded where we have enhanced this burning house with some sparks and heat displacement added inside of Blender. This is a super simple effect to do and can add a little bit of detail to make your shot a little bit more interesting. As usual, this scene breakdown is not really a tutorial, but we'll just go through some of the concepts that we've used to make the final composite. Anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender. The first thing we did to create this shot was of course track our footage. So as you can see here in the motion tracking tab, we've added a whole bunch of tracking markers here. And for this specific type of shot where it's just a tripod panning from left to right, you normally don't need this many trackers. However, I was getting a solve error of under two, so I just decided to go for it for the shot. But uh, probably in the future, or if you're doing this in a more professional environment, you may want to clean this up a bit. But this is the first step we took to make sure that our 3D camera was moving in the same way that the live action camera was when filming the actual shot here. So we tracked the footage, solved the camera motion, and imported that tracking data to our 3D camera in the scene. And then the next thing we did was create a few particle systems for the uh, spark particle. So as you can see here, if I just zoom in here, and if we just play through our timeline here, you can see the particle system that I've created here. Super simple Newtonian physics. And I've just, uh, if I go to rendered view, you can see that all our sparks are, are literally just a basic icosphere that we've added an emission material to. As you can see here, if I select our spark particle here, this is what we're using in our particle system instance as our spark particles. So literally just an emission material with an orange color on it to give it a fiery look. And then we just instance that on our particle system. And then we've randomly the scale of this particle a bit as well. So I've just created this particle system and then what I wanted to do is just as you can see here when I go to camera view I've just placed multiple versions of these particle systems in different areas of our scene here where the fire was most intense so the kind of embers would be coming from that area as they are being emitted and it would be easier to blend that on top of the live action footage in the compositor as uh, already it's uh, orange and bright and everything. So that was the first step we did. We added these sparks on their own separate view layer so that we could overlay them on top of our live action shot and composite them with a little bit of glow and glare separately and have some better control there. But the next thing I did after adding our sparks particle system is I added some particle systems to drive the heat distortion effect in our compositor. So as you can see here, if I switch to the next view layer, you'll see that I have some new particle systems here. And in its current state, this might be a little bit confusing, but what we're doing here is we're just creating a particle system system to use as sort of a mat to drive our heat displacement in our compositor. So as you can see here, if I go to render view, this is the data that we're getting in this view layer. And we're going to use the white portion of this view layer to drive some displacement in our composite and add that heat wave effect. So we've just made our particle system and particles here pretty big. So when we use this system to drive our heat displacement, it's uh, fairly prevalent in our scene. And you can use literally any data you want to drive your heat displacement system. You can use a piece of stock footage, some uh, texture planes, different types of procedural textures, whatever you want to use to drive your displacement, you can pretty much do as long as you separate it into its own specific view layer and just use the white value of that view layer. So in this specific example, we've just used these uh, particle systems to drive our displacement. And as I mentioned, we've separated it into its own specific view layer so that we can composite first our sparks on top of our live action shot and then secondly use the heat distortion particle systems to drive the displacement map. So as you can see here when I go to the compositing tab we've composited both of our view layers on top of our live action shot here and I'll just go through the compositing nodes here to show what we've done. The first input we have here is our movie clip going into some undistortion and scale nodes which Blender adds automatically when you 3D track your footage and solve for the optics of your camera. Then I have an alpha over node here to overlay our sparks view layer on top of our our footage. So as you can see here, if I just go to uh, output viewer and export this to our viewer node, you'll see that we've lost our heat displacement, but we just have our sparks overlaid on top of our footage, which is being input through this sparks view layer down here. I've taken our sparks. I've uh, increased the brightness of our sparks a little bit with an RGB curves and then added some glare to the sparks with this node right here. They were a little bit too saturated for my taste. So I brought down the saturation to 0.85% and then of course overlaid them on top of our live action shot. And as you can see here, 
here if I bring our factor down here for this alpha over node, you can see the before we've added the sparks and then if I bring that to one, you can see the after with the sparks added. The next and final thing we did for our shot, other than the color correction, of course, is use our heat distortion particle system to drive a displacement map. So as you can see here, we have our heat distortion view layer here going into a blur node. I just wanted to blur the data that we're going to use as our heat distortion node before we put it into our displacement map node here. And what I've done is I've taken our composite with the sparks on it, and I've put this into the input of a displacement map node. And then I've I've taken our heat distortion particle system data and used that as an input for the vector of our displacement map. And then finally, I've uh, created a little value node here to change how much I wanted this displacement map to affect the input of our composite here. So as you can see here, if I bring this value down to zero, you'll notice that our displacement map no longer affects our image here. And then if I bring this up to an extreme value such as maybe 300, just to give you guys an example of what this is actually doing, you can see that the displacement map is being driven by that particle system that we have created for it, which is, uh, you know, creating this distorted heat effect. Obviously, this is a little bit too much, but for the sake of this example, I hope you get the idea. And of course, how that particle system is animated in your 3D scene is going to directly affect the way that heat distortion looks on top of your footage. But uh, that's just a little quick tip on using displacement maps inside a blender to create a uh, kind of a heat wave effect. I will do a full step-by-step -step tutorial on this entire process, so stay tuned for that. But I'll end this video here. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.